Jogging my thumbnail, that's my favorite shout out of any of the Mission Impossible movies. Not him jumping off a cliff or hanging onto a plane or anything. It's him sitting at that restaurant. They get that low tilted angles where it looks like they're gonna stick a camera up somebody's nose. This movie actually has a lot of callbacks to that. There's a lot of like tilted shots. It's really stylized and colorful and there's a review in here somewhere. <laughs> Ethan Hunt goes on an impossible mission. For the seventh time, yeah, not the best franchise name, is it? In Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Okay, so before I give my thoughts on this new Mission Impossible movie, I should give my thoughts on the other movies, which, like I said, there's seven, and there's gonna be eight soon. And, big surprise, I haven't seen them all. Uh, I've seen the first three, which, as a lot of people pointed out, are not the best <laughs> movies. They all kind of have different failings that kind of don't make them work as a whole, but they all have good things in them. I stopped watching around the point where apparently they got great, which is the one that Brad Bird directed, and brought in Simon Pegg to start to make it about a team again instead of Tom Cruise playing James Bond, which is not what I thought Mission Impossible was. I thought it was more about the team, but I guess those movies really started to bring that back to the focus. Enough where at least in Fallout, I had a good time, even though Tom Cruise is still very clearly the main character, and I always make an argument he kind of has to get out of the way of his own ego. There's a lot of lines in the early chunk of this where they'll say things like, he is the human embodiment of chaos, and even like the guy who runs everything behind the scenes, played by Carrie Elway, surprisingly doing a good American accent this time, is saying, wait a minute, everything is put on the line. We're putting everything in the hands of just one man, one man. And I'm thinking, yeah, well, again, it used to be a team, but no, Tom Cruise came in and said, let's make it about Tom Cruise. So there's always that element that's going to be a little distracting to me, but doesn't get in the way much. They do, once again, try to bring in the team and try to give them not character as much as personas, if that makes sense. It's not like there's a lot of deep soul searching with these characters, but they all have likable personalities that you follow through all these crazy things. This mission of yours is gonna cost seen these summer flop busters. We might be in the red soon. I think this film is very, very enjoyable, even though it is pretty silly. It really should be called Mission Ridiculous, but it's an entertaining, adrenaline-filled ridiculous, and it's a lot of fun. There is one element in this movie that I think most people are gonna like, but I can see some viewers really not getting into. And that's it goes a little sci-fi. The main villain in this movie isn't a bunch of spies or an old enemy from the past. I mean, they're all in there too, they're there. But the main threat in this movie is just called the Entity. It's an AI that becomes self-aware and it gets more and more hostile to a point where people think it's gonna try and destroy the world. And all these different countries wanna come in and either take control of it, as what most of them wanna do, or they want to destroy it. And that is something that on the one hand is kind of relevant. There's a lot of talk of AI right now. And as I'm watching this uh, algorithm pretty much play these tricks on uh, these people using their own technology against them and then sort of side with a human being who also has this love of destruction and suffering and stuff like that and sees everything as kind of meaningless. It is interesting, but it's also kind of silly in a Mission Impossible movie. It's kind of like if John Wick suddenly worked in Aliens, like, yeah, I mean, they're silly, but do they get this silly? Is this really the territory we go to? So. They're kind of like the Planet of the Apes movies, where if you accept the ridiculousness of them, that they get more and more silly as they go along, but they also have some interesting ideas in them, you're gonna have a good time. I can see some people just hearing the setup of this and saying, no, I am not on board with this. I mean, this thing literally has like an all-seeing eye. Like, it just looks like the eye of Sauron, a pixelated Pac-Man version. And I can just see so many people being like, well, wait, why doesn't the AI just 
take them out here? Why doesn't the technology use their phones against them or their laptops against them? Which it does a couple times, but not enough times where you kind of think, well, this should all be over in two minutes. But that could be something that maybe they'll answer in the next film because you don't know if this is like all part of its grand plan or something. So there's a whole bunch of stuff like that that doesn't always make a ton of sense and does lead to a lot of dumb character moments where you feel like, well, wait, if you're using the computer here, don't you know something's gonna go wrong then if this thing can control all computers? Things like that, little details that you can easily nitpick and, and kind of laugh at. But this is a film where Tom Cruise leaps off a cliff to catch a train. You kind of know it's going to be a little ridiculous. A lot of critics often look down at the idea of combining two things that worked in other films into quote unquote something new because they feel like they're just taking from things that have already been done, just putting them together, you know, hoping magic will happen. And I honestly don't think that way. I actually really like when we take things that have worked and we mix and match them. I mean, look at Across the Spider-Verse. They're taking all these Spider-Mans that have worked before and they bring them together and made, you know, like the best Spider-Man movies. Uh, it can backfire. Three Ninjas was clearly just Ninja Turtles and Home Alone and that was pretty stupid. But with this, I feel like they are constantly mixing and matching not just a lot of the past Mission Impossible movies and even some of the show. Again, there's a little bit of a campiness to it and some of these lines you've heard a million times before like, I should have killed you when I had the chance and some pretentious lines that, you know, are very old book but at the same time are fun to hear. You have no idea the power I represent. It knows your story and how it ends. In two parts, because we're trying to bring the 2010s back, I guess. But it also adds all these other elements from other action films we've seen in a way that's really fun. Like one of the earlier sequences in this is they're trying to get something from a guy in an airport without him noticing. But on top of that, there's another team that's trying to look for Tom Cruise's team who's trying to take the thing from the guy in the airport. Well, okay, we've seen something like that. But then on top of that, there's a thief that steals the thing that Tom Cruise and this other team are trying to get. All right, well, that's kind of a, another element. But then on top of that, there's a bomb that they're trying to defuse that's gonna go off in this airport. Well, okay, that's a lot of things. But there's also riddles that they have to answer in order for them to defuse this bomb. But then on on top of that, there's also the computer that's mixing up everything that they're seeing so they don't know what's real, and it's like 20 things on top of each other, but it's all done in a way where you follow it, and it's really, really fun, and it's really, really suspenseful. Ethan, what's your objective? Oh, it's also a combination of all the times Tom Cruise has run in a movie. Yeah, there's a lot of that in this, big surprise. I think the film is self-aware, kind of like the algorithm in this, that it is kind of silly, but it doesn't hide from it. It kind of embraces it, but never goes too tongue-in-cheek. It never winks too hard. I like this one moment where Tom Cruise has to drive this really crappy small car, and he has to somehow pull off a cool action sequence in it. So I feel like there's a good sense of humor there, and those are some of the best Tom Cruise moments where instead Instead of looking like the badass on the motorcycle with the shades like he did in Mission Impossible 2, that was probably like his ego at his worst. He kind of looks like he's kind of tugging on his shirt collar going, okay, like what am I going to do next? How am I going to get out of this? And we're with him. We're both rooting for him and we're also kind of concerned about what's going to happen to him and the other characters, but we're also kind of laughing too. And it does get really, really silly with everybody's seen. It's him driving off a giant clip. You know it's gonna be silly. Uh, wait till you see where he lands. <laughs> no, Cruz, don't go in there. That's where your mummy sequel lives. I had a really great time, but you have to be aware that there is a little bit of a campiness, there is a little bit of a silliness, and there are a lot of plot holes in it that you can easily point out. If you want a movie that's going to be super, super believable, like a really believable spy thriller, this isn't it. I don't think that many people think this is going to be it. I think they do want the stunts. They do want some interesting ideas. They do want the charm and charisma of these personalities. And all these actors do have great personalities. And sometimes it can be predictable, but other times it can be... 
a really great kind of predictable. Like when you see a loop coming on a roller coaster, you know it's coming, but you're excited to go through it. That's kind of what this film feels like to me. It feels like a really fun roller coaster that you can predict the twists and turns, but there's so much fun to ride through. Also, it's a film I did not feel the length of. This film is like two and a half hours, and I was not looking forward to sitting through a two and a half hour Mission Impossible movie, but by the time it got to the end, I was actually shocked there wasn't another climax, like a surprise climax, even though I knew this was a part one, because I really couldn't believe two and a half hours passed already. It kept my attention that much and gave me that good of a time. So I'm giving it three and a half out of four Tom Cruise kung fuing off a bike. I really like this movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. With that said, what did you think of it? Particularly the stuff with the AI. I'm really curious how people are going to take to that. Did you think that it really, really worked? Did you think that this was the natural evolution where all this should go? It should get crazier, but it doesn't quite go fast and furious crazy. Or do you think it did just get too silly and you're sick of the Tom Cruise show and it should be much more about the spy stuff and sneaking in and being more subtle? Or are you somewhere in between where you think, you know what, Tom Cruise is still pretty cool in these movies and having a fun time and the rest of the cast are having a fun time. There's a lot of cool stunts. It's good enough for me. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you next time. Take care.